say for a large portion of my life, I was raised and conditioned to be the opposite of Sophia. To be the kind of person that Sophia would rush to the aid of and like knock you upside the head and say, girl, what's wrong with you? Get over it. Fix yourself. Step. Right? Um, but uh, I'd gone through uh, quite a significant change in my life um, a couple years prior to this, to this gig. And had embarked on this journey that I think I'm still kind of on to find myself and not find myself again, find myself, period. Um, and I think Sophia, it's all very serendipitous, because I think Sophia came in to my life at the exact right time, you know, um, to teach me about the kind of woman that I want to be. And, you know, that's the kind of character, that's the kind of experience that literally cracks open your rib cage, and then all the fingers go in and muck about, and then your, like, your rib cage doesn't get closed up, right? <laughs> like nothing gets sewn back together. It's now just this open cavity and you have to surrender to that because to close it up is to revert back to the scared, vulnerable, self-conscious, like valueless person that I, that I really once was in comparison to who I am now. Being away from my child to do my job um, is one of the hardest uh, things that I have ever done, um, and not an easy decision. But the alternative to that was putting myself in a position where I would not be able to show my son what it looks like to follow your dreams. What passion looks like, what ambition looks like, what unwavering dedication looks like. Um, it also gave way to many opportunities that we wouldn't have been afforded otherwise. Um, and that was something that always kind of plagued me uh, as part of this work, wondering what is my son going to think? Is he going to appreciate this? Um, or is he going to feel like we didn't have enough time or I didn't make enough space for him? And mind you, you know, I, I could get off stage on a Sunday night and I'd be on a plane to see him for 30 hours and then back in time for a show on the Tuesday, you know? But um, I remember when my son came to see the show um, and he was in such awe of that work and he was in such awe of this beautiful, black, adorned canvas uh, in front of him. And, you know, he references color purple all the time, all the time, like he did the show. And has told me on numerous occasions that he's proud of me and that because of me, that I have inspired him to live his dreams and do the things that he is meant to do. Um, and so I feel like I did something right, you know? 
Um, so I guess that would be my advice for other mothers if, because your kids are everything. When you have kids that just really sort of like trumps all of the other stuff, but it shouldn't negate the other things as well because the person who you give to your child isn't just the mother of your child, it's the person who you were before your child. And I think you would be doing them a disservice and robbing them of the opportunity to get to know who that person was as well. Um, so yeah, advice for other mothers um, who, who, who want to do this kind of work or who has who have work that take them away from their children, um, would just be to go for it if it suits you and it fits into your life, you know? There's also the option of taking your child with you, which I did for a long time. Grayson was right next to me. That's like much more of a challenge, especially when your kids are young. Um, but you know, now my son can come to the theater at eight years old and sit down for two and a half hours of the color purple, right? I can bring him into a rehearsal hall and he will be on his best behavior and completely enthralled by the process. You know, he's grown up in this environment and um, you know, his creative inclinations are, are reflective of that as well. Um, Sophia as a mother versus me as a mother. You know, she fought for her kids. They were paramount, they were primary. Um, and I think that her and I, uh, you know, out of all the things that we had in common, I would say that, that that's near, near the, the forefront. Yeah. It's just that unconditional, unconditional love. Yeah. Kim. Kim. Well, Kim was awful, and I would like to say <laughs> Kimberly Rampersad is. She is like a gift from God. She is a visionary. She is a person who has been gifted the capability of seeing the thing and then seeing the thing that makes the thing and then seeing the other little things that make up that thing and she can take it all the way to its most minute and then work from there. It's like a seed into uh, like a blossomed flower. Um, she's very special. And uh, one of the things that I appreciated most about working with Kim was that she gave me so much space to explore. She didn't try and tell me who Sophia was. You know, we had our first um, uh, character uh, check-in maybe like it was like the first week or second week top of second week of rehearsals maybe and uh yes so we walked into the um our first character uh character chit chat session and i was prepared for kimberly to tell me who sophia was or who she needed sophia to be and instead she turned the question around on me asked me what i see and asked me about me. Who's Janelle? Because um, she had already seen so much of Sophia in me, um, which is part of why she cast me in that role. Um, what I also loved too was that there's always this, um, uh, uh, in the portrayals that I have seen since of Sophia, including Oprah's to some degree in the film, Sophia's always had this very like, um, like brutish, um, you know, like 
tomboy, like put him up kind of uh, persona or like air about her. Uh, like she needed, she always needed to defend herself. So therefore she took on more of like uh, her masculine. And if you read about Sophia in the book, she is lady through and through. And Kim reminded me that a lady can be all of those things, but still be this, still wear gloves, still have her hair done, still wear a nice fitted dress, still wear earrings. You know, she's not rolling around in the mud with the guys, but if she needs, you know, someone steps to her and she needs to take care of business, she's ready. And she will get up off the ground, dust herself off, and still look fabulous, right? Um, which I loved. I loved. Um, because we, as women, it always seems like we need, you know, well, we're, we're being put into, or like compartmentalized into uh, like this or that. You know, it's always one or the other especially as black women, right? You're the sexy one, or you're the angry one, or you're the crazy one, or you're the unlovable one. But can't we just be all of that all the time? As well, it's not your choice. As well, I get to label myself, you know? And she did that for me. She allowed me to label myself. She allowed me to make my own choice. She reminded me that I have agency and then she gave me that agency and then she gave it to me even more so. So working with her, changed me. It changed me because through this process and through her consistent remindings and teachings, I stopped asking for permission to exist. And I love her for that. And I will never forget that gift that she gave me because that is a sacrifice that she's making as well to give that to me. That's not just something that you say to somebody, right? It's concentrated work and reminders and love and care and attention because you see so far farther deep into that person than they're able to see in themselves and to reach out say I see you and then to go even further and say I'm gonna help you see you and I'm not gonna stop until you do but listen mm -mm. she's She's the queen. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and visit our website, musicaltokens.com, for your daily dose of female power.